Now, one of the most requested video ideas I've had for a while from you lot is to come up with my own dream F1 calendar. So that's exactly what I'm doing today. This is my version of what I think the 2022 season with hopefully the new regulations because I have heard some worrying rumours that it might get pushed back again, but please, I'm sure it won't. Please don't do, please don't do that. 2022, but 20 races, not 23 races. So 20 races in 2022, not 23. Weekend starts on Friday. I'm having practice sessions in the afternoon. They can do all their press stuff Friday morning. The teams can set up in the morning and then they have a practice session Saturday. So it's just two practice sessions. Okay, condensed weekends. We don't need Thursdays. Okay, it's not necessary with 23 races. I really hope they don't have three day weekends for this 23 race season because that's too much surely also no triple headers and I'm doing my best to minimize travel as much as possible so whenever there are double headers okay because again no triple headers I want them to be geographically fairly close look F1's not a you know environmentally conscious sport like compared to other sports it there's a big footprint. We've actually only got 43 tracks to choose from because I'm not just picking any, you're not gonna see Brands Hatch here, okay? As much as I'd love that, that would be jokes, okay? Modern F1 at Brands Hatch. That's not gonna happen because it's not a grade A circuit. There's only 43 in the world in 30 countries. It's one circuit per country. This is meant to be an international, a truly international sport. So I wanna include as many different countries as possible. And yes, of course, this isn't really realistic because of the commercial value of certain races that we don't like and no one likes, but we know it, they're only there because the owners have deep pockets. It, it's what it is. F1's a business. I understand. Like, I understand you can't always have the best circuits, but this is my fan perspective. This is if Tomo was in charge, right? Tomo Carey, Tomo, no, not Carey, Tomo Domenicali, Stefano Tomenicali. Does that work? Probably not. If I was in charge, this is what I'm doing because... It's not my money. But you can't have an F1 season without testing. And where are we going? I'm saying Catalonia. Again, nice and boring. But look, let, hear me out, okay? First of all, Spain works. It's a great middle point because when you think about it, all of the teams are based either in the UK, Switzerland, or Italy. With the new regulations, I don't think it would be as bad for racing. Um, but you will be seeing later in this list if Catalonia actually makes the cut in the calendar. I think for testing purposes, it does the job perfectly fine. So I'm more than happy for it to stay there. Round one. We're in Australia, 18th to 20th of March, and we are at Albert Park. Look, unfortunately, in Oceania, there is only one grade A circuit. As much as I'd love to go Adelaide, Bathurst with F1 cars would be ridiculous. I'd love to see it, but it would be a bit too much. Uh, Adelaide would be great, but there's no grade A circuit there. So it would have to be Albert Park. And I to be honest, uh, Albert Park gets stick. I don't hate Albert Park. I, I think it's okay. It's okay. Uh, it's, it's quite a nice season opener. I, I like the vibe around the place. You know, I love Melbourne. Okay, it's one of my favourite cities in the world. And hopefully, Daniel Ricciardo, this season opener in 2022, he will actually have a good Australian Grand Prix. Please. Round two, first to third of April, is at Bahrain. I like Bahrain. I think Bahrain's a great circuit. Sakir, the loop, the oval, whatever you want to call it. That was like nice as a one-off. Okay, we enjoyed that. But the actual main circuit, I think, is a great track. So I would love to be back at Bahrain for sure. Round three, Germany. 15th to 17th of April. Now you've got two fantastic grade A tracks in Germany to pick from here. I think there might be more than two actually, but the ones that obviously come to mind. You got your Hockenheim, you got your Nürburgring. And for me, maybe this is a slightly controversial opinion, but for me, the Hawks got it. I prefer the Hockenheim ring to the Nürburgring. So for me, let's get in the vote. Round four, we are in Portugal from the 6th to the 8th of May. Now, I speak on behalf of everyone. We were all pretty chuffed with Portimao, how that race turned out. Okay, that was pretty decent. Okay, we, we enjoyed that spectacle. It was much better than Catalonia typically is. And so this is the time to say that, no, there is no Catalonia, okay? If you're going to have a testing venue, don't then also have it on the calendar. I think that is well done. Bun off Catalonia, bring in Portimao, obrigado. You might have noticed as well that I put two week breaks between all of the first four races, the first four rounds. Now, look, you want to ease the season back in, okay? You know, 
the drivers will have lost the thickness on their necks. You know, everyone's been chilling since the end of last year. So I think any double headers at the start of the year is a bit too intense. So there's no reason as well. The thing is, when you've got 20 tracks rather than 23, it buys you a bit more flexibility, a little bit more time with three less races to shoehorn in. But that lack of double headers is over because round five is the week after Portugal. We are in Monaco at Monte Carlo, 13th to 15th of May. I love Monte Carlo. I've said it before, I'll say it again. It adds something different to the flavour of the season, right? I know there's not great wheel to wheel racing, blah, 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 but the spectacle of Monaco, the qualifying, the, sh- the emphasis on strategy during the race, and I still think the race often ends up being quite unpredictable. Qualifying can be a madness, though. I love that. I, I, I love Monaco. Would I love 20 Monacos? Hell no. But would I love 20 of any track? No. It's nice to have a bit of unpredictability. It's something different in the cauldron that's bubbling up. I love it. Two-week break, round six, Azerbaijan, 27th to 29th of May. Baku is cool, man. I rate Baku. Like Monaco, it's very unique. It's very different. It's not a typical street circuit because of that well long straight. Baku often delivers incredible moments, whether it's I am stupid, whether it's Ricardo and Verstappen crashing, whether it's Stroll getting a podium. Like it delivers consistently, if you ask me. And then straight after Azerbaijan, round seven, we're in France, but we're not at the circuit Paul Ricard. 3rd to 5th of June, we are heading back to what is an absolutely banging racing circuit, which we haven't seen in F1 since 2008 at Magni Cour. What a track. Amazing battles over the years. Another two-week break, round eight. We are in Austria from the 17th to the 19th of June. The Red Bull ring is a banger. No cap. I love I love it. It's like a fat off go-kart track. And again, it's the, the Styrian mountains around it. It's a beautiful place. I love the Red Bull Ring. 100% that's in. Round nine, the week after Austria, is the United Kingdom Grand Prix of Great England land. It's at Silverstone. Obviously. I mean, of course it is. It's not going to be at Bloody Brands Ash, is it? 24th to 26th of June, always delivers Silverstone. Love it. And then a two-week break, Round 10, Belgium, three letters, S-P-A, Spa, done. It speaks for itself, doesn't it? Before we get to round 11, this is where Tomo introduces his lovely, thick, three-week break. No developments allowed. Put your locks on your factory doors, Christian, all right, helmet. Don't develop that car any further. Let the mechanics, let all of the people behind the scenes in particular... Have a bit of time off with their families, not flying around the world all the bloody time, right? Let them have a, a, a few weeks just to chill. And after that three-week break, round 11 in Italy, the 29th to the 31st of July. Now, with just 20 races, I said this earlier, no country can have more than one Grand Prix. And Italy is arguably the most difficult to choose from because you've got Mugello, which I love. You've got Imola historic iconic track and you've got Monza but for me if I had to pick out the three for the F1 Canada I'm going Monza I uh, just the, the Tafosi appeal the fact that again it's quite a different track because it's got the long R straights like mix it, it mixes things up a bit I don't rate Monza as highly I think as a lot of people do but I still think it very much deserves an inclusion here for sure maybe I would have been more inclined to put Mugello in if it wasn't for that massive pile up that happened at the restart that was a bit sketchy for me round 12 turkey 12th to 14th of august now i know a lot of people disappointed that we don't have turkey back again because it very much did deliver in 2020 it was a good race we all enjoyed that seb got his podium charles bottled it at the end stroll could have won but didn't was that turkey i think it was if it wasn't i'm stupid istanbul park is here Will I retarmac it or not? I don't know. It was quite fun. The car was slipping and sliding all over the place. I thought that was, it was a different dynamic. Again, unpredictability is always a good thing. It was kind of like, if you've ever played Trackmania and you've driven on the ice on Trackmania, it is difficult. Ask Jimmy, he knows. Another little two-week break. And then round 13, we are in Canada. 26th to 28th of August. My very... Very favourite track. 
in Formula One, Circuit Gilles Villeneuve. And then again, because we're already in North America, let's go to the USA the week after, minimize that logistical effort. Second to fourth of September, we are in the USA. But what track are we at? Because there's only two, I'm, I was surprised, there's only two grade A tracks in all of the USA. In all of the United States of America land, there's only two. Cota and Indianapolis. Now, Cota's cool. I like it. I think it's a decent track. I don't think it's great. I don't think it's terrible. Okay, people seem to love it or hate it. I'm kind of in the middle. But Indy, we haven't seen F1 there since the absolute shambles that was 2005. We need to right some wrongs. We need to heal some wounds, okay? Because the American fan base deserves more. I think Indianapolis would be, it's the home of motorsport in the US of A. That would be unreal. In that fat off oval with all the American fans going mental, I'd love to see it. At Indy, that would be sick. Now again, because Tomo Tomenakale is so good, he's so kind, you're getting another three-week break, okay? But this one, you can develop to your heart's content, okay? You're getting a three-week break from flying around the world, but you're not getting a three-week break from the factories. Because this is getting towards the end of the season, so we want to see teams ramping it up. Maybe it's a really close title battle, and then everyone's working their asses off trying to get their car into as good a condition as possible for round 15, which is in South Africa. 23rd to 25th of September, we are going to Kyle Army. It looks like a very, very decent circuit, but also it's so good that Sim Dane and Josh Revel made a bloody song about it. Link above. It can't be truly considered an international competition if you're not including all of the continents, apart from Antarctica. Sorry, Antarcticans. Africa needs to be there. As much as I'd love to see one in North Africa, the facility already exists in South Africa. It makes a lot of sense. I think there should definitely be a South African Grand Prix. Another two-week break, and again, another location that we haven't seen recently, but I think is craving a Grand Prix. Of course, it's got to be India. 7th to the 9th of October. I don't buy for a second that there isn't an appetite for Formula 1 in India. In fact, according to my analytics, 4.2% of you on average are going to be from India watching. So let's just sort all of this tax is F1 entertainment or a sport nonsense that ended up stopping the Grand Prix because we haven't had one in India since 2015. It actually feels a lot longer than that. Um, but yeah, I'd love to see the Bud International Circuit back on the F1 calendar. Another two week break time, round 17. We're in Japan from the 21st to the 23rd of October. If I had to pick, because I said earlier, Italy had the most hotly contested kind of race. But for me, if I had to put two from the same country on this calendar, purely just based on what I enjoy and what I want to see, what I like, I would put Suzuka and Fuji. But I can't drop Suzuka. Even for Fuji. I love Fuji, but I love Suzuka a little bit more. And Suzuka's just such a bad... Of course Suzuka's got to be it. It's a no-brainer. Sorry, Fuji. And then the week after that, because relative close proximity, round 18, we are going back to Malaysia. 28th to 23rd of... 28th to 23rd? That's not how time works, Tomo. 28th to 30th of October, we are returning to Sepang. I like to think of Sepang, if you think of Herman Tilka as a cake, Sepang's the cherry on the top. Even though the rest of the cake is a bit stale and a bit off, it's the cherry. It's got everything. It's got the long straights. It's got the tight, twisty, slow speed, hard braking zone areas. And it's got the flowing medium speed corners, which again, don't suit current F1, but 2022 could suit it. And it's a joy to behold. Sepang is a beautiful racing track. I love Sepang. Bring it back, please. And also, the weather's pretty unpredictable in Malaysia. You know, you could get a monsoon. You're probably going to be very humid. Again, adds to the unpredictability of that race. Two-week break. Round 19. We are in Mexico. 11th to 13th of November. Mexico deserves a Grand Prix. I don't really rate the current track. It's okay. It's not. It's one of them that I could happily get rid of. If this track wasn't in Mexico, I probably wouldn't have included it. But the atmosphere in that bowl, in that dome. Imagine Sergio Perez right at the end of the seat. Two, like second last race. Imagine if Sergio's in a Red Bull and manages to hook it up, which I hope for. I hope he does. I'd love to see it. If he can hook it up and be fighting at the top, imagine the atmosphere in Mexico for that race. It would be 
Tafosi levels, if not more. It would be insane. I would love to see it. And then for round 20, in the Tomo F1 2022 Formula 1 season, of course it's Interlagos. Of course it's Brazil. Of course it's the finale. Look, Abu Dhabi, it's just not Interlagos, is it? It's not quite the same. We all know it's true. We all know why Interlagos isn't the finale anymore. Money talks at the end of the day. But my word, that is one of the greatest racing tracks of all time, if you ask me. And I'm sure most fans would agree. Most of you would like. Everyone loves Interlagos because it always delivers quality racing. We didn't get it last season. We should be getting it this season. Apparently, there's some like nonsense around a judge being a dick and, and saying, oh, you can't have the race. for. I don't, I don't know the details. Please, we need to be going to Sao Paulo this year. Um, but whatever happens in real life, in this alternate reality, uh, 100% Interlagos is the final race of the year. And there we have it. That is my 20 race calendar for my perfect dream F1 season. What do you think? Do you agree? Do you disagree? Maybe leave your 20 down below. They have to all be great. It'd be much, I could just, you know, I'd love to put tracks in here that aren't necessarily grade A, but those are the confines that I'm trying to work around for this to create what could this could happen. And for me, if you look at this map, this is a truly international circuit. There's dots bloody everywhere, all right? There's dots all over the place, okay? All the continents, again, sorry, Antarctica, all the continents apart from Antarctica are covered. Please, hope you enjoyed this one. This one was good fun to make, good fun to, to research and come up with all of that. I enjoyed this one. So thank you for watching. Please don't forget to give that like button one of them. Uh, if you haven't already and subscribe make that sure that little button isn't red anymore grey it out notification bell so that you know when all my stuff is coming out my name is Tomo this is the Tomo F1 YouTube channel or should I say actually I can still call it the Tomo F1 YouTube channel even though I've dropped F1 from my name because of FOM so I'm going to continue to do that uh, thank you very much again <laughs> well <laughs> thanks again have a good one.